go back to your villages and give to them what you have received. This taste for the chanting of the Holy Name and this kind of transcendental multi-level marketing system started. <laughs> so they went to their villages and did what he said and then they infused others, infused others. But he invested them with spiritual potency and the explanation is given both the Samvit and Ladini Shaktis. Were, that's, that's the spiritual potency that they were invested with. Now we saw that already yesterday with um, Bhakti Nirotakura's explanation. There's a source of that explanation that he gave, and that's Shaitanya Charitamrita. When we can be also become invested with spiritual potency, just in chanting, there's a small thing just aligning with Lord Chaitanya's gift, the fullness of his gift. It's really good to know what that gift was. What's the fullness of that gift that he gave? And a way to get to know that is through Rupa Goswami because he was empowered to explain it, transmit it, give it. Now, what's the extent of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy? Answer, no woman. And the fullness of his mercy and spiritual empowerment he gave to Rupa Goswami. That's like circuit overload. Who's going to have a circuit breaker that can manage all that? But he was a qualified person. He received it and he gave it in one of the sources that he gave. This little book that's part of our Bhakti Shastri study that teaches us how to reach Virgin Cream. And what's there? What's it like? Like a travel advertisement. It's really wonderful. The last three verses are describing simply the glories of Radharani and Radhakund and the love of the residents of Vrindavan for Krishna. Simple language, very eloquent and very elegant. But to get there comes this one. And so we'll do what we did. This is a reminder for those that attended and uh, an overview for those that didn't. Let us chant together. We're going to do it three times because there were three different themes. Sthyam Krishna Charita Nisitapya Nidya Ito Patata Rasanasya Narochika Nu Kimpada Radha Nubinam Kalusaiva Jusha Sadi Kramad Bhavati Tadhantri so in big letters, there's Sita, which means sugar candy, translated by our founder Acharya. The holy name, character, pastimes, and activities of Krishna are all transcendentally sweet, like sugar candy, although the tongue of one afflicted by the jaundice of a vidya cannot taste anything sweet, it is wonderful that simply by carefully chanting these sweet names every day, a natural relish awakens within his tongue and his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. So our first discussion, somehow the colors didn't come up right up oh. There's the rock candy, or sugar candy, or mystery, or sita. It's an image from the internet. And those that have heard Srila Prabhupada's teachings, you know very well, he says over and over that one who has jaundice, the medicine recommended in Ayurveda for jaundice is sugar candy. Anybody here had jaundice before? Me too. 
And did you take sugar candy or mystery? And what did it taste? It's not so sweet. Not so sweet. My experience maybe was like, I didn't have a really severe case, but it was good there. Confirmed. But the, 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 the nature of sugar is a sweet. That's this, you know, there's another example of the problem. The constitutional nature of sugar is sweetness. The constitutional nature of water is its liquidity. The constitutional nature of fire is heat and light. So if it's not sweet, it's not sugar. But what if your tongue has jaundice? It doesn't taste sweet, but it's sweet. So the names, similarly, is like, is sweet, and is like mystery, or sita, or rock candy, that cures the disease, the avidya disease. And when there's avidya, just as we heard Bhaktisiddhanta, we, we, can't, we can't perceive the name for what it really is. Rather, we perceive the name according to our conditioning. Once upon a time, I was a college student. <laughs> and my field of study was pre-med, and it was a biochemistry major. And I learned, and it's true, that according to the conception that you carry, a scientist, objective scientist, looks at data, they're going to read the data this way according to the conception that they have. And another scientist is going to read the same data differently because of the conception that they have. The mind is that filter that filters even empirical data differently. Hmm. Besides the senses are imperfect, the mind is more imperfect. <laughs> so the interpretation of data is according to your conceptions. So how do you get a mind that's free from material conception? Well, we're, we're hearing that the method is contact with that which is pure results in purification. It's a very simple principle. Another standard teaching of Prabhupada. That is, if you want, if you're cold and you want to get warm, well, stand near a fire and you get warm. Because by the principle of association, with fire, you get warm because it's one of the properties of fire. It's warm, heat, light. Similarly, if you want to become pure, free from material contamination, contact the Supreme Pure. And then you become purified. And that way the mind can become free from material contamination. And then you can see things as they are instead of as they aren't. So what's that opportunity for us to get contact with the Supreme Pure? Holy day. Purna Shuddho, Nitya Mukto. Purna Shuddho, completely pure. Nitya Mukto, even coming into this world, Nitya Mukto. Eternally free from material contamination. That's how we that can make the mind pure. Small matter, bring the mind to the name. Many of you know, some of you I'm sure know, Ravindra Sarupravu. He has this really nice way of saying this. He said, when you're chanting, it's really simple. There's you, there's the name, and there's the mind. And all you have to do is bring the mind to the name. Small thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> but the mind is distracted. So our mind doesn't go to the name. The mouth is going most of the time. But where's the mind? Distracted. And then he has this other phrase I like it. I'm distracted by the distractions of my distraction. <laughs> <laughs> Even you get rid of this distraction behind that is another one, behind that is another one. Because of our 
who can say how long, how many lifetimes of misuse of free will? It's not just this one. Many, 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 many. too many. We have this really deeply rooted tendency to choose away from Krishna. And so what's the default? The temporary. We're attracted to the temporary. In Kamesha, I want to enjoy quotation. Rajoguna, it's our contact with this mode of passion. That's where the mind goes. Or it goes the other way, mode of ignorance, and laments and worries about the past, and so forth. Depression, intoxication, madness. The world that doesn't have a, a mind that's pure. You can try this and try that, but really the solution is making the mind pure. And the real solution is you and Dharma. So the disease is the disease of avidya. This is all review, nothing new. We've discussed. The disease is avidya, and the medicine is the sweet holy name. So the sweet holy name removes the jaundice-like condition, that is to say, the holy name cleanses the mind. Jeto darpana arjanam. The holy name cleanses the mind, and the holy name awakens the dormant propensity of the soul to be engaged in service to Krishna. It sure helps if you have a desire that says, I want to be engaged in Krishna's service. But even if you don't, it's, it's effective. It's just more effective if you have clarity of purpose. I want to be engaged in Krishna's service. Please, Krishna engage me in your service. That's the mantra. So, and that bhakti becomes awakened by the sound of the name after the mind has become cleansed and the little light goes on and says, yeah, I like service, and really in the ideal state and just serving Krishna in all the different, 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 different roles that I play in my life. We all have different roles. I want to be in Krishna's service at the center of all of those different roles. I don't neglect the roles. I just put Krishna at the center of all of them. And then when that devotion to Krishna becomes awakened through the chanting, through the medium of bhakti, Tasadeve Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojataha Janiyati Ashu Bhairagyam Jnanam Cha Yadahaitukam Knowledge awakens. And when knowledge awakens, a vidya is dispelled. Light goes on, the darkness is dispelled. Just from chanting. I mean, it's nice to read Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. That helps a lot. And then we can check whatever inspirations we have against the Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. Make sure, you know, we're not heading for the ditch. But because I'm inspired, I chant and I have this idea to something. <laughs> we confirmed it with Shastra and who and sadhu. But knowledge awakens and darkness is dispelled. Avidya is the jaundiced condition. So it goes, the chanting of the holy name and Srimad Bhagavatam are two peas in a pot. They, they go perfectly well together. There are three other items Rupa Goswami especially appreciates, but this jaundiced condition John this like condition of avidya becomes diminished, and then the next is that the suffering, because suffering arises from ignorance, the root cause, the, the, the suffering of or my, this difficult struggle of material existence, we can cross beyond it. It dissolves. Exactly hallucination. It's like a dream. It's not real. It appears to be real. Because I forgot Krishna, it appears to be real. It's uncovered by Maya. 
or vagrants. Too simple, right? It's got to be more complicated. No, it's, it's quite simple. Prabhupada said, simple for the simple, difficult for the complicated, for the crooked, he said. So, review, second time, now with a different word being emphasized. Yad Krishna Nama Charita Gisita Pivindya Lito Patata Sanasya Narochikanu Kintada Radam Dinam Kalusai Vajashta Sadi Nama Vatina Dramula Hantri So now in big letters is this Adarad which Prabhupada has chosen to translate as carefully chanting. You may have memorized this by the time we're done with our class. <laughs> the holy name, character, pastimes, and activities of Krishna are all transitively sweet like sugar <coughs> candy, although the tongue of one afflicted by the jaundice of a vidya cannot taste anything sweet. It is wonderful that simply by Carefully chanting these sweet names every day, a natural relish awakens within the tongue, and his disease of vidya, and from a vidya comes suffering, is gradually destroyed at the root. The root means it can't come back. Some of you have homes. Probably a lot of you have homes. And those homes, most of them have lawns. Some, of, some people live in those townhouses and condos since you don't have one. But those of you that have lawn, you know there are sometimes weeds, like a little popular one in this part of the country is dandelions, right? So, get your lawnmower up. And, and, and there's, you know, the dandelion thoughts. But the root is there. And so... And the dandelion goes quicker than the grass, right? In our... Just like this is Farmington Hills, suburbs of Detroit. So in Chicago, there's a center in Naperville. And not directly across the street, but down that way a little bit to the right, Walk, go drive by the driveway, there's this dandelion forest. <laughs> Looking at your roof, she probably has seen it. There's a zillion dandelions. And mowing the lawn doesn't take care of the forest of dandelions. You know, it's just sitting there, so they just keep, you know, more dandelions and more dandelions. There's hardly any grass, room for grass left, there's too many, so many dandelions. So the only way is you re remove the thing by the root, don't just get out the lawnmower. So suffering isn't resolved by using Prabhupada's expression, blowing on oil. You've heard that one before? Some of you haven't heard that one. If you've ever had a boil, it's painful. And one of the things that helps temporarily is you blow on the oil, the movement of air makes the pain feel less then you stop blowing on the boil and the pain comes back. <laughs> it doesn't take care of the problem is the infection that caused the boil. So you have to not just advance the boil because there's still this infection in the blood. It'll come back again because there's infection in the blood. You have to go right to the infection in the blood. You remove the thing at the root and the boil goes away. One of the places I visit <clears throat> there was a really nice teenager who shared, in a public setting like this, gun control. You know, I get really wound up when it comes to gun violence, and I want to do something about it. And so in the back of my mind, I'm wondering, should I, I, I've been taking part in rallies and this and that, you know, gun control law. Should I be doing that? I'm a teenage hard Christian devotee. And social activism is rah-rah for, you know, 
young people. Big, if you're not aware. Big, not small. So I said, what's behind gun violence? Tamagun. If you move the Tamagun manifestation from over there, it's going to go somewhere. You can check it. Doesn't mean people still won't violate it. Doesn't check the problem. But the root of the problem is Tamagun. So you're a devotee. You know the root of the problem. So it's not that you shouldn't have concern over abuse of guns. But you're a devotee. So you should help people understand what the root of the problem is. And, and you may feel like you're so, a little person. There's this big abuse out there. And you're a little person. But how you can get rid of the mode of ignorance problem? You know, that's what did the Yas do when he saw, oh, oh, here comes Kali Yuga. Manda Samanda Mateo, Manda Bhagya Yupadruta. They need transcendental knowledge. But people in the states are lazy. They don't want transcendental knowledge. They want sense gratification. Everything's bad. And even if they have the idea of transcendental knowledge, they're going to get cheated by somebody that doesn't know. We've all met people that have had that experience. And they don't even know that they've been cheated. The blind meeting a bond. Andanyatangi Bhubhakiyamana. Pramat knows. But people that are being led by a blind person don't know. So, what's this nice teenage Hare Krishna devotee going to do? To your capacity, you live the life of devotion and you speak the life of devotion. It doesn't mean you poo poo people that are doing social activism. But you need to know it's really incomplete. And those persons who can hear, you help them understand that's not getting at the root of the problem. That's what Prabhupada did. So you be an instrument of our founder charter. You're a little person. Me too. Propagate. Transcendental knowledge. And encourage people to chant Hare Krishna. I'm looking at our schedule. I want to keep to our schedule. So I'll, I'll just tell a little story. Once upon a time. Uh, I have a relationship with, with a devotee, Hare Krishna devotee, that during some period of time in their life, they were, imagine yourself having this job or career of overseeing all the guidance counseling divisions of the entire public school system in New York City. Whoa. And this devotee sat in the, the Board of Education for New York City. And at a certain point in time, the supervisor of this devotee said, I see a change in you. You're so calm. And whenever there's a problem and I come to you, how, what do you think is the solution? You've already thought it through. You've got a suggestion. And then you're sitting there reading your book. Like, what's going on with you? <laughs> Looks good. She, and this devotee said, I don't think you want to know. <laughs> you know, I want to know. She said, well, I'm taking an interest in Krishna consciousness. And her supervisor said, oh, no! <laughs> Cop-outs! Because when her supervisor was in college, she was a social activist, a political activist, World War II era, you know, baby boomer person. Stop the war! And these 
pushing the people that are banging tambourines and jumping up and down. But they do nothing to help the problem. Cop outs. Don't have anything to do with those people. Smile. Some time passed. I think there's a short, there's a longer version. This is a shorter one. <laughs> the supervisor found out that her husband had cancer, terminal cancer. The supervisor was bent out of shape, emotionally a wreck, very attached to her husband. She said to her subordinate, you're a spiritual person. I need some help because I'm, my mind is heading for a crash landing. Can you help me? She said, where do you get your strength from? She said, I can introduce you to the one you get this, I get the strength from. She said, I'd like to meet him. So there was some meeting. And so she became inquisitive and recognized a little bit, at least, that social activism isn't the solution to the problems of life. There is a deeper solution to the problems of life. And that deeper solution is removal of ignorance through careful chanting. Now, I don't know what happened after that. I don't know if she started chanting. But our business is we have convictions. Remember that iceberg example? There's behaviors, there's values, and there are deepest held convictions. This chanting of the Holy Name, if chanted carefully, will take us, using the language I was using, the place of higher consciousness. Take us to Krishna. Simple as it is, as turmoil ridden is the mind, it will take us there. Very powerful. So carefully chanting, one of the two things, we discussed Sachinandan Swami's five points from his, uh, just because he's one of the uh, great teachers of Japa retreats and how to deepen your chanting. So we discussed this carefully chanting includes this yojana, which is a Sanskrit word that is come to the same dhatu as yoga, which means linking, right? So yojana is alignment. Closest in his words, I haven't studied the etymology, but yojana means alignment. So that's why he picked the word yojana, a body, mind, and heart. We discussed what does that mean? Another is as you're working on alignment, what about establishing a relationship or awakening a sense of relationship with a name? The name is a person, we have a relationship with, eternal relationship with Krishna that has been forgotten. And it needs a, a way to awaken that eternal relationship with Krishna is through the medium of service. So there comes the next one, service to the name. We discussed this elaborately. Rupa Goswami says it, Prabhupada says it, we're being encouraged to go more deeply, the carefully chanting aspect, daily, because that's what Rupa Goswami writes, in the mood of service. And the mood, you say prayerful mood, but specifically Sachinanda Swami's term is Vipramanga, that is anticipation of meeting Krishna. There's Samhoga and Vipramanga, meeting and separation. So the anticipation of meeting, being with Krishna again, or Prabhupada's words, please accept me. Or the child that goes like this. That's universal. I've seen it. Doesn't matter the culture, the language. I don't think the language is in different places, but I know what that means. 
Daisy Tech. There's no question of mother or father not accepting the child, but the child wants to be held. That it's an affection, it's a natural affection between child and parent, and parent and child. Natural affection. To repose that affection upon Krishna. Doesn't mean everyone else is a zero. Everyone else is part and parcel of Krishna to the degree that that affection for Krishna is there. The mood of connecting with Krishna and the connection with the soul that's our family member or friend or whatever it is. That Krishna eyes is that affection. And Sharnanagati, this is Bhakti Notakura's term, uh, specifically the final of the, the six limbs or angas of surrender is Atmani Vedana, dedication of one's very self to the Lord, specifically to the name. Now that's a mature stage, a complete stage, but this is your number five out of the five. But they're, they, they, they're not buckets exactly, they're not exactly one and the next one and the next one, but they're categories of going more deeply into carefully chanting. And then again, in this morning class, we heard Bhakti Siddhanta's carefully chanting. Specifically, his explanation was I should be showing a picture of Bhakti, you know, or Bhakti Siddhanta. But emphasis upon hearing. The ear has the power to conquer the mind. I think I would see no hands if I asked the question Does anybody regularly chant? where the mind is not distracted. <laughs> <laughs> the mind is distracted from who knows how many lifetimes of distraction. And the distraction is there because of our attachment to asat. And with that attachment to asat comes disconnect with sat. We're habituated to it, you're conditioned by it. Material energy is really strong. So how do you do carefully chanting when <laughs> material energy is so strong? Very difficult. Too easy. It requires mercy, but it also requires effort. This is another one of our themes in carefully chanting. So an effort for carefully chanting is here. And the mind and the senses can be conquered by the ear. That's what we heard this morning. That's in the carefully chanting category. And our little review is almost done. We'll chant one more time. Maybe I'll ask somebody if you remember memorized it would like to chant it for us without even looking at the text. Let's chant together. Sya Krishna Rama Charita Isravya Rito Patata Sanasya Narochika Nu Kintva So as you see, the final phrase is what's in big letters. Tad Gada Mulahantri. Prabhupada named one of his disciples Dukkha Hantri. <laughs> the destroyer of Dukkha. This is Mulahantri, the destroyer of the, the root of this disease of Avidya. And it's the root of the disease of Avidya is completely destroyed by carefully chanting on a regular basis. Every day. 
carefully chanting every day, not just on 32 round day, carefully chanting every day. The holy name, character, pastimes and activities of Krishna are all transcendentally sweet, like sugar candy. Although the tongue of one afflicted by the jaundice of avidya cannot taste anything sweet, it is wonderful that simply by carefully chanting these sweet <coughs> names every day, a natural relish awakens within his tongue and his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. Not mowing the lawn, pulling the root. The disease of India. So, well, we discussed this yesterday evening and what was the topic we discussed yesterday evening? It was too long ago to remember, right? <laughs> And we have a call you from memories and she I don't remember what they did last hour. Uh, experiencing, experiencing the form of the holy name. Huh? Experiencing uh, the form of the holy name. Yeah. Thank you. You remember the song, the Bhakti Dotakra song? Gitavali song from the Namastaka number six about the name and the person name, Nama and Nami, or Vachaka and Vachya and Vachaka. And so they're the same. And of the two, the sound of the person named is more merciful because it takes away up to the root, the root cause of avidya. And what's that root cause of avidya? Ignoring Krishna. The root ignorance is ignoring Krishna. And from that ignoring Krishna, but then all that which is spiritual. Here we are in the material world. There are things in this world that are spiritual. This is described by our acharyas. So here's a small list. You're going to close the curtain? Or? No, half closed. Okay. Uh, the soul, devotional service, the deity, the name, the scripture. But think about it. The ten offenses touch on all of those, thinking they're material. Exactly what Bhakti Siddhanta said. We don't see the name as what it is, we see it what it isn't. We see it as a material sound. So that's one of the offenses, to think of it as a karma kanda ritual. It's meant to elevate you to piety so you can enjoy the heavenly planets. No, it's an offense. That which is spiritual isn't seen as spiritual. That's the, that's avidya. And the, so the, the, the avidya, that's the root of the disease results in offense. An offense results in anartas in the heart. And then even when we chant, we can't chant effectively or say it negatively. We, or we, we chant mechanically or Bhakti Vinod Thakur, one of his terms is the counting game. It's good that you numerically commit. But that, the essence is not the numerical commitment. It's a beginning. It's really good. But the essence is not numerical. The essence is connecting. And you continue practicing carefully chanting every day. And the power of the name is contaminations of heart are removed. A nice example, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, is the mist of ignorance and the clouds of an artist. So clouds have the power to block the power of the sun. That's our experience. 
The sun power doesn't become diminished because there's clouds in the sky. But our experience of the light and the heat of the sun can be different depending upon how many clouds and how thick they are. Clouds have the power to block the power of the sun. But the sun creates the clouds. And the sun has the power to remove the clouds in the same way it creates the clouds. So, faithfully, carefully, chanting every day has the power to remove whatever offenses there may be to the, the deity form of other forms. doesn't mean go ahead and make offenses to the deity, but if there are, then the anarchas that arise from Seva Aparad are removed. The problem is Nama Parat. So don't chant, right? Then you don't have Nama Parat. <laughs> I know some people that reach that conclusion. And the other Sound effect, basically. <laughs> so what do you do? Strive to overcome the offenses in the root is inattentiveness that we discussed. Attentiveness is driven by intention. Why do you chant? That's a good question. Oh, I like chanting. That's why I chant. It's about me. I feel more peaceful. Or whatever people may say. I know it's good for me. It's the mode of goodness, motivation. I chant because I know it's good for me. I, I, I brush my teeth because I know it's good for me. It's oral hygiene and besides my mother taught me, it makes sense. Oral, oral hygiene is good, so I brush my teeth every day. And I chant every day because I know it's good. That's the mode of goodness. Then there's a higher position. What's that higher position? Do I have faith in the reality of a higher position? this place of higher consciousness or actually I belong to Krishna. I'm his property. Krishna, I am yours. That's the spiritual conception of I and mine. There's the material conception and there's the spiritual conception. Krishna, I am yours. So what does that look like? life of devotion to Krishna. He can please engage me because I meant the part is meant for service to the whole. Please engage me in your service. That's a prayer. And I need mercy because otherwise I'm distracted. I need mercy. So this is this is a little summation of our time spent together yesterday and then again this morning. Conclusion. Three conclusions. Chant carefully every day. Those of you that did not receive one of these, there's a few extra printed copies. Who did a fantastic job with some binding? It's really you did a good job. If you didn't get one, there's some up in the front up here later. Now, please take one. And inside, number two. There's an exercise that I could take home for the next few weeks, apply the messages that we spoke about and are in this little booklet to improve the quality of your chanting. Not in one ear, not the other ear, and, oh, that was a nice experience, what's next? But, but take it and apply it, because that's where we're going to make some progress. And Bhakti Mindo Thakur, one of his sayings that I really like is, progress is a series of small steps in the right direction. I'm an incrementalist at heart, so I like it. Progress is a series of small steps in the right direction, so it's really important to know what the right direction is. And it's really important to take small steps in the right direction. Then you can progress. So, dear devotees, please progress in your entering more deeply into the holy name and awaken 
the taste and the, the, it's already there in the name. It's already there in the soul's connection with the name, rasa. Open invitation. Please take it. <laughs> Any discussion? We have a few minutes. Uma has a question. Her hand went up immediately. Put your hand up. He didn't see you. There we go. Maharaj, what can I do to um, stop taking things for granted? Gratitude. You want to know how to develop gratitude? Okay. You want to ask something else? Um, I think it might help me. Whatever you were going to say is fine, but I think it might help me if you could something practical. That's that always practical. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mark. You want to write it down or just listen to the recording again? Or do you have a good memory? You listen to the recording again? I listen, yes. Okay, okay. One. Every day, make an entry into a gratitude journal. And it doesn't have to be at night, it can be any time during the day, but every day, sit back into this mode of goodness space, reflecting on what, ha what has come into my life from Krishna or Guru or Vaishnavas that is a wonderful gift. It can be, you know, something that you say again and again, but you know, something that I feel has a gift that's been given to me. Write it down, and then contemplate the gift and the source of the gift. That I call it gratitude journal. Next, not over yet. What can I do in practical terms to express that gratitude? You can put it in your journal or you can process it however you want to process it. I want to get back. When you feel gratitude, you want to do something. It's like compassion. You feel compassion. There's an at, there's a cognitive, there's an affective, and there's a motivational element. I want to do something. For that, in gratitude for the gift that I've been given, it doesn't have to be from the giver of the gift, but I want to get back. Three, without being recognized by the gift giver, I want to do something for, to that gift giver. Best if they don't even know because I have this tendency that I want recognition. I did something and I want recognition for doing something. So in an inconspicuous way, it can even be something that you do every day. That you do that as a gesture of gratitude to that gift giver. And number four, we're not done yet. Number four is that gift giver, there's something that I understand is their calling or their mission in life. With, with, with them knowing or not knowing, let me do something to assist them in their mission their life's mission. So let's take your Guru Maharaj. You've received a lot from him. One, two, three, four. And it, Prabhupada says, and it's true, practice makes something second nature. Really simple statement. I heard it so many times. What does he mean by that? So we have our conditioned nature. I take things for granted. I don't like that. Practice 
not taking things for granted and have a practical way to do it. And it becomes second nature. And then gratitude is what's in your heart. And as you start going down that path of things that you have received, there's abundance. And there's lots to feel grateful for. There's certainly problems. Abundant of problems too, but then I don't the, the, the kindness that has been given to me by many sources. I'm not taking it for granted. I'm not because that's what kids do. And I don't want to be a kid anymore. Not, not just say, you know, like mom and dad taught me to say thank you. And then be self-indulgent with the thing that's been given to you. The, you said the feeling of gratitude. It, the act of writing, that number one. Yeah, that's cognitive. Okay. Then comes affective, then comes mm -hmm. motivational. Mm -hmm. Will that writing develop the feeling of gratitude? Because it, 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 it should, especially if you put that in one of the steps. You go and you, you reflect what? And then you go to, how do I feel about that? It's, it, you know, it's gratitude. What am I grateful for? First, what have I received? And from whom have I received it? And then in that reflective space, it can be while you're writing or just close the book. Developing, developing quality is not informational. It's transformational. Yeah. So, try it. And you, you know, it's not, it's not a, it's not a vending machine. It's not you put in the coins and pull the lever and down comes gratitude. It's, a, it's part of a, an effort. And this, the effort is, what do I feel? No, when the heart is closed, it's hard to feel anything. But if you massage the heart that's closed, it can become soft. And then you feel things. On, on, on a cognitive awareness level of what I feel about the gifts that I've been giving that I've just been taking for granted. It, 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 it helps lead one to the next to the next. Up front. Manish, uh, clarification first. Um, so is it safe to say that um, everyone's uh, relationship with the Holy Name and how they're progressing on their on development of that relationship, the Holy Name is, is different. Of course. So there, there's categories, but then mm -hmm. unlimitedly. And so there's snowflakes, and then there's the design of the snowflake. Right. So uh, I was wondering, like, is, how, is there a way one can uh, assess their uh, progress on the chanting of the Holy Name, or some practical ways? Sure. One, two, three. Attraction. Detachment. Desire for service. To Krishna. Now, you go too short. How strict are we with having RT at 1230? Not so strict. If I entertain some more questions, and we can do our little thing at the end. That's okay. okay. The Pujari is not going to get disturbed. Okay. Any other discussion? A little sharing from my side. I have found, in addition to our sound man over here, who is really awesome. <laughs> <laughs>
I've known Kishori, she was sitting in the back on Saturday morning for so many years. I didn't know that she lived in Toledo and this is the temple that she visits because she liked, I asked her, she liked the devotees here. No, she's American like I am, but you know, she, she likes you all. I, I hope you like her because she's really nice. She couldn't come because she has some deadlines because she's an editor and BBT and other things. But she was appreciating specifically the question and answer session. So, you know, thank you for this experience of participating, listening attentively. And you know what? What? <laughs> you can show your gratitude for whatever you received by the exercise. Page two, actually bottom page one of that little handout. Please, apply things that you've heard, and that'll be my happiness. Your happiness. I, I like service. I like serving the devotees because I know Krishna likes them. And this is a service for me. Next weekend I'm going to do the same service in another place. And I'm, I don't know if they're going to be as interactive as all of you have been. But you're a good audience. So keep going with the application part. Not just information, transformation. Because tra yeah, implementation brings change of heart. You know, chapter three of Canto two, pure devotional service change of heart. That's one. Even if it's a little step, great. Then celebrate. And then, okay, what's the next step? We'll do that for some time. And check. What's the attraction? What's the detachment? What's the enthusiasm for service? And service doesn't just mean little sharing. Serving can mean service at the temple. But service is our life. Your home. Your family. Your career. Your children's education. You know. <laughs> the, we, we, our lives is our, our lives are a life of service. So service to Krishna in everything you do and accessing that more deeply serve the name I think I'm going to end because I don't see anybody waving their hand so I, I um, want to do two things in addition to thanking you all for your participation I want to share another service that I do you Kishore mentioned it yesterday and I'm going to mention it again. <clears throat> One of the services I like is going with devotees. Well, I'll share this. Devotees from China, devotees from... I just recently met somebody from Nepal. And <clears throat> they had never been to the Dom and they went to with a group of devotees from Nepal to the Dom. They went to the Dom and Mayapur. And just talking about it, this devotee lit up. I mean, visibly. So, going with devotees, and not just, you know, as a tourist, take pictures and tell your friends who went to this place, that place, but experiencing the Dom is a nice service. So I've done that for a number of years. But one of the best times to do it, weather-wise and otherwise, is Kartik, and a lot of families can't go because they have kids, and they have to with their kids or the school, and so they can't go. Kids can't go, parents can't go, because they're... So a number of the, you know, people who couldn't go said, can you make recordings, and so we can remotely, you know, hear. So sure. And then it was, can you take a video of the places you visited, and you can see the places and hear at the same time? So sure. And then so somebody started doing that, and then that same somebody got a bright idea. He wanted to get a high-resolution camera, like super quality, it's super quality, but it's so big, you couldn't, how do you transmit it? So they had to get some software to compress this super high quality, high resolution video. 
take some time to do all that. So last year when I was here, sometime, I forget exactly when, but I had videos, a little USB stick with the flash drive with Dwaraka and Ayodhya visits, and we made them available to everybody. And it's a service. And um, recently there was a visit to Puri. And it's such a big file that they're still downloading it. It said nine days or something like that. <laughs> you know how it starts a big number and then exactly is less, but it, it took a lot of work. I would say hundreds of hours of work. Not just you know the, what to speak of the preparation and the performance, just even getting the recordings that has photos of deities you're not supposed to have. <laughs> we have a system for getting them. I won't tell you how. <laughs> and then videos of entering the temple, so you can see here's the gate, the, the Twaram for the temple, and you come before the deity. And, look around the temple and everything. Kirtan of the, the, the videos of the kirtan. Audio of, because the little feedback was, you know, we have to have our computer, we can't listen to this in the car on the way back and forth to work, so there's an audio recording, you just listen to the lecture. Video recordings. The lighting was bad, so it was lighting enhancement, it took a lot of time, etc. So it's loaded up, in a 32 gig flash drive. Some cost in the flash drive, some cost in the production. And a donation to help with some service that I do. I'm doing some service for others and others can help with some service that I do. So that's an idea. And after I finish, uh, Yoko Kishore is probably gonna stand up and do what he likes to do. I encourage you all to participate. Um, I sent one of the persons who attended made a three minute what they call the promotional video. So if you don't mind, there's audio video, three minute audio video. Like, I'm going to need a little technology help and our super excellent <laughs> technology person can help me do it. <laughs> Because, at least from my computer, it shows on my computer, but not on the screen. So let's do this.
Just by placing your feet in this holy place, one has fulfilled or achieved the benefit of visiting all the holy places in all of existence. If someone even takes one breath, go ahead. <laughs> in Purukshottam Kshetra, he will attain the results of an entire ashramada yagya. Keep breathing, propose. <laughs>
So I think when Maruti Prabhu said this year's slogan, BBD slogan is be a giver, you know, I was really, very, really happy actually. So I mean how many of us liked how many of you liked the, this promotional video? So of course I want you to be at the receiving end, obviously. I want you to receive it. But of course, how many of us want to be the givers also? Yesterday, I told him to click the picture and everyone raised the hand. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, but by the time he raised, by the time he clicked, he said 15, 20. I said, as far as I remember, everyone raised the hand. So if you don't mind, keep their hands up and we'll click it again. So, again. So. Raise it high so I don't miss that. <laughs> oh, Some already have come. Or, yeah, if you raised this yesterday, you don't have to, but I just want to make sure to cover everyone. Please keep it raised this side. <laughs> <laughs> and this side. And this side. And if you don't hear from me, feel free to contact me that you wanted one and if I miss you, feel free to contact me. As soon as we have get that whole technological problem solved, we'll reach out to you and give you. My such way to conquer the mind and senses, hearing is the way. You know, what can be a better opportunity for us to hear and see these, you know, different people, especially Chinese, performing these dramas and uh, uh, the Puri Dham, where we can watch the whole Puri Dham and of course the benefit of hearing from, uh, from Maharaj directly. So I request all of you to uh, watch these things and hear hear these things after acquiring the memory stick. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Very, very grateful, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So once again, you know, Maharaj has taken a uh, lot of pains and endeavor just to give the holy name. Yes, please, he said more than seven or eight times and just go, I kept on counting. I love to do this service. How many of you know how long, I mean, since when Maharaj has been coming to Michigan? Since when? Five years actually. Oh, yeah, no, 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 five years. <laughs> actually, no one can tell except Maharaj himself. <laughs> yeah, when he started coming, many of us were not born. So, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't keep count that way. I, I do remember that little podium that's still there after maybe 30 years. The little lectern that had the little light that doesn't work, and you know, they <laughs> wheel it in when you get to class, and it just sits there. Ermola was there, and <clears throat> Prachitos, and starting the Guru Kul, and I don't know how many years ago 30 years? 25, 30 years, something like that. So he has been traveling, and was really coming to Michigan. <laughs> traveling is one thing all over the world, but coming to Michigan and trying to give the residents of Michigan, this transcendental knowledge, very selflessly. So let us express our gratitude from our core of the heart. The Lord is joining the Nina Sari I'm very grateful for your presence and for this wonderful presentation. Very grateful, Maharaj. As well as Haramba Swami Maharaj. Take the mem memory stick, our uh, little smart bro. You, know? <clears throat> you can uh, uh, you can collect from him. The transaction of course is the one. Thank you very much. Shubhra Pati.